Just mention the word Ethernet to some people, and their head tilts sideways, and they look at you kind of crazy, like if you whistled at your dog. <whistles> Do you know what Ethernet is? Of course, this is Ether, and this is Net. It's Ethernet. Not that kind of Ethernet. I'm talking about Ethernet. You know what I'm talking about? Ethernet? You, you don't get it? All right, let's break it down for you. Ethernet has been around since the 80s, also known as Twisted Pair, and it's a technology that allows you to network together computers, networks, or devices using a variant of protocols. Got it? Good. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make your own Ethernet cables. Why, you ask? Well, they're pretty expensive in the store. Let me show you some examples. Here are two major vendors on the Internet and their cost for a short and a 25-foot cable. Pretty expensive, huh? Seven feet or six feet of cable for that price, you could do much better than that. Especially if you're taking on a large project where you need to network multiple systems together and wireless is just not an option. If you have a large quantity of cable that you need to run, let's dive in and show you how you can make your cable for pennies on the dollar. All right, let's walk through the supply list of what you're going to need to get this job done. First off, some bulk Ethernet cable. And you can get this in a variety of different colors from most bulk distributors online for a very low, inexpensive cost. Secondly, it's a good idea to have on hand a couple of needle nose pliers. Not that you need this on every Ethernet job, but if you need to get a hold of something really small, these become very, very handy. An Ethernet cable tester, and if you've never used one of these or know nothing about them, we'll walk through how to use this in just a few minutes a Ethernet cutter and crimper, and lastly, some RJ45s. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is prepare the end of this cable to get ready to receive the RJ45 end. Well, it's a pretty big mess down here. You've got sheathing all stripped off. It's not really nice and clean. You've got cables that are kind of frayed out here, and it may not be the right length or whatnot. So you're going to need to trim it off using your cable cutter and crimping tool. Right here at the back end of the crimping tool is a blade that's specifically used for trimming up cable. So go ahead and place your cable in and trim it off. Nice and clean. Next you're going to want to remove the outside insulation of this Ethernet cable while protecting and being very conscious of the copper that is inside. Each one of those strands of copper inside of this Ethernet has its own insulation on it and it's color coded specifically to help you do the wiring job. So let's jump in using our cable cutter and crimping tool. Let's familiarize ourselves a little bit more with the cutting and crimping tool. We've already used the back section of the tool to cut off the end of the Ethernet cable and make it nice and clean. The center section of the tool is used to crimp on RJ45 ends to an Ethernet cable. And the front end is used to strip off the outside insulation. It's a multi-part stripping tool in the front two razor blades that are replaceable should they become dull, and in the back, a metal stopper to make sure that you don't cut off too much of the outside insulation in depth. Now, what it doesn't have is insurance to make sure you don't cut too deep. So when you're cutting off the insulation of the outside, you need to be very careful and very conscious of what you're cutting and don't cut too deep. Let's go ahead and strip off the outside insulation. We'll take the Ethernet cable and we'll insert it into the front all the way to the stop of the metal. Now, what we're going to be doing here is very carefully paying close attention to the cable, squeezing it as it just cuts through the insulation, and then letting it go. As we get a nice clean ring all the way around the cable, go ahead and remove the sheathing and exposing all of the internal coppers. The next step is to inspect your ends of the internal coppers to make sure that your stripping tool, the two blades, didn't cut too deep in damaging the inside cables. Once you've ensured that they're not damaged, we can move to the next step. Now the next step is determining what standard you're going to wire your Ethernet cable. There's the EIA-TIA 568A and the EIA-TIA 568B. Let's take a look at those. The EIA-TIA 568 standard is really a set of three telecommunication standards all bundled into one from the Telecommunications Industry Association. And in 2001, the 568B standards were first published, and they superseded the 568A standards. And the 568B is really a definition for an 8-conductor, 100-ohm, balanced-twisted-pair wiring standard. You see some examples right here, and if you'd like to do more in-depth, 
in-depth research. There's a lot of information on the web. Just do a Google search on it. Now we're going to select the EIA TIA 568B wiring standard for our Ethernet job. So we need to separate our Ethernet cables on the inside to meet that standard of the EIA TIA 568B standard, which would be a white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, and white brown, brown, in that order from left to right. Now this is where those needle nose pliers might come in handy because these are really small wires and you need to be very careful with them. So you see we have our orange wires right here and each one of those wires is color coded. There's a white strip on there on the orange and then there's a solid orange one. So that's how you can tell which wire needs to be first. So let's finish separating these wires and get ready to put the RJ45 end on with the crimping tool. Now it might take you a while for the first time that you ever do this because these wires are very very small and very very delicate. So don't get frustrated on your first try. If you don't make it the first time, go ahead and cut off the end of the wire and keep trying again. Once you get your wires laid out to the standards of what you're trying to install, in our case we're using TIA EIA 568B in the wiring standard, once you get it in the order of the wires that you need to have it in, go ahead and hold them carefully and then get your RJ45 end ready to accept the cables. All you have to do is insert the cables into the end of the RJ45 and there are tracks on the inside of the RJ45 to guide the wires all the way to the front. Push them all the way to the front and then get your crimping tool ready. This is the part of the task that I call commit. Because once you crimp the end of this RJ45 onto this Ethernet cable, you've committed to the layout of those copper wires on the inside. And if any one of those wires is out of order to the standard that you're going to want to wire to, or is not deep enough into the RJ45 to be crimped into this to make that solid connection, then you're going to have to cut off the end of this and start over from scratch. So give it one last inspection to make sure that they are in the correct order and they're deep enough, and then get your crimping tool. Now, looking at the crimping tool, I say it has a front and back. Some people argue. Now, my front and back is this. The back of the crimping tool is the end that has the teeth on the crimping. The front end is where you would insert the wire. So go ahead and take your Ethernet cable with your RJ45 end with the brass or copper facing inserts on top and place it into the crimping tool. Now once you do this, hold it securely so you don't get any movement on that wire and squeeze down as hard as you can on the crimping tool until you cannot squeeze any further. You'll hear a little click and once you do that, that RJ45 is on this cable to stay. Now just repeat this process on the other end of the Ethernet wire that you're running. So there you have it, an RJ45 Ethernet cable. Well, yes you do. But is it done correctly? Aha! One more step to do. Verify your work. And without this next tool in your cable arsenal, you might plug this in and wonder why you're having network problems. That's why you need the cable tester. The cable tester is devised of two parts, the sending unit, which contains a 9-volt battery, and a listening unit, which listens to that signal down the line and tells you which ends of the wire are correct or incorrect. So let's plug it in and let's check out our wire, which I know that I've wired incorrectly. You see the Ethernet end on this end. I'm going to plug in one end of my Ethernet onto this. I'm going to flip over my listening unit, and I'm going to plug in the other end of my Ethernet cable, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the unit right here. You'll see that it has a sending indicator right here, and the listening unit is telling me all eight pairs of wires as it goes down. And you see when it gets to pair four and five, it indicates a red light. And if I look at the legend of the listening unit, a red light means that they are reversed. So pairs four and five are reversed on my RJ45, meaning that I would have a failed Ethernet cable. So without this tool, you wouldn't know unless you had microscopic eyes and paid very close attention to each end of this RJ45. Take the small investment and buy yourself a cable tester. So let's cut off the end of mine and get this thing fixed so we can get networking.
Now, once you've inspected your wire after your testing unit has showed you that you have a bad end and you discover which end is the bad end, you're going to want to cut the end of your RJ45 off and start over. Now, don't get down on yourself. Even the best of us had had to do this a couple of times on our wiring jobs. So go ahead and cut that RJ45 end off and start over from scratch using the steps in the beginning part of this video. Now, I've already cut off mine, so I'm going to take it away and throw it off and start over. All right, you've replaced the faulty end of the RJ45 with a brand new RJ45, and you've made sure that the cables are in the correct order, or at least you think you do. It's time to test it one last time before you have the peace of mind that this cable is ready for Ethernet traffic. So go ahead and plug it into your sending unit of your cable tester and into your receiving unit of your tester, and go ahead and turn on your tester one last time and see if you get all green lights. There you have it. Congratulations. A successful Ethernet cable that you created by yourself to the custom length that you needed for pennies on the job for your Ethernet job. And if this was a cable that was ran through a wall or the ceiling, the test would still be the same. Get yourself a cable tester. It's worth every dollar that you spend on it. If you have ideas for future tips, tricks, how-tos, or product reviews, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us an email. The email address is live at scottydonline.com. That's live at scottydonline.com. And if you'd like to see videos like this each and every week, tune into Interface each and every Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at live.scottydonline.com. For Interface, I'm Scotty D. Take care, web world.